The paging file, or page file as many folks call it, has nothing to do with books or personal grooming implements, but rather it is a ghost file on your computer's hard drive. You can't normally see it, and you can't manually access it, but it is constantly having data written to it temporarily, then wiped when it's not needed anymore. It acts as an overflow for your system memory or RAM, which holds the data needed for all of your running programs. And while it's much, much slower than RAM, it's better than having your system completely lock up when you launch one too many Chrome tabs and run out of system memory. To access the settings for your page file, open up the control panel, go to system and security, then system, then advanced system settings, then the advanced tab, then the settings button under performance, then the advanced tab, and finally the change button under virtual memory. There are lots of cool dials and switches in here, so what do they all do? Well, Nothing, until you uncheck automatically manage paging file size for all drives. Then you can add and remove paging files on any of your partitions, set a custom minimum and maximum size, and even turn it off entirely. So let's start with the most hotly debated topic in here, that no paging file checkbox. Many users feel that Windows is underutilizing their RAM when it pushes a minimized program out of memory and into the paging file, causing the system to stutter a little bit when you maximize it again. Some people have so much RAM that they could never expect to use it all at once, so they're like, yeah, awesome, bring it on, more responsiveness. Now to be clear, pressing this button will do what you think it does. It will force Windows to keep all the running programs in your lightning fast system memory. And while that may sound very tantalizing to these folks, and while I've personally run my system with no paging file in the past and not observed any ill effects, there are many reports from knowledgeable folks of strange behavior on systems without a paging file, including even applications that flat out refuse to run, even though the PC still has plenty of RAM. On top of that, Superfetch, which was introduced with Windows Vista, uses system memory to cache frequently used files and make your system more responsive in other ways, well, that will have less RAM to work with and be less effective as well. So there's a trade-off there. All right, so you're telling me I shouldn't turn it off. Well, what about an optimal size? Uh, the general rule of thumb on the internets is one and a half times to two times the total amount of system RAM, but I could make it huge, right? More memory is always better, right? Even if it's just virtual, right? Well, no, not necessarily. If your system had so many running applications at one time that you needed all of your system memory and a paging file 10 times that size, then it would probably be operating so slowly anyway that it would wouldn't really help. Best to just leave this one to the system to figure out on its own as well. All right, fine then. So Linus, what was the point of this stupid video? You showed me cool buttons and dials, then you told me not to touch them. Can I do anything to optimize this thing? The answer is yes. Moving your paging file to a separate drive entirely can help performance in much the same way that using a separate physical disk for a scratch disk helps performance. The higher performance the secondary drive, the better. Beware though, in addition to your main paging file, Microsoft recommends retaining one paging file on the boot partition for system dumps in the event of a crash. Your OS will automatically make use of the one on the separate drive more frequently and use the one on the boot partition less frequently in order to get the best performance possible. But that's all done in the background. So ultimately guys, there are two takeaways from all of this. Number one is don't disable your paging file unless you're willing to run that risk. And number two is if you're determined to have fewer pages in your life than, or at least higher quality ones, then you should head on over to squarespace.com slash techquickie. By using their website builder, you can create a clean, beautiful website that's focused on the content you want your audience to see without letting cluttery and unnecessary nonsense get in the way. They have over 20 templates to choose from that are optimized for desktop, phones, and everything in between, and it's as simple or as customizable as you want, with everything from drag and drop site building tools to an advanced mode that lets you add your own HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code as well. If you head over to squarespace.com slash techquickie, you can get 10% off your first purchase with offer code techquickie1. And what's more, if you grab an entire year's worth, they'll throw in the first year of a domain for you as well. I use Squarespace for linusmediagroup.com, so if you want to see a fairly quick and dirty site, and check out what that looks like, you can head over there, or you can see for yourself and just grab a trial and go to it, and then 
you'll know for sure if you like it. Anyway, remember guys, that's squarespace.com slash techquickie and offer code techquickie1 for 10% off. Guys, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts were if they're just too complicated for this. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to TechWiki for more fast as possible episodes just like this one.